Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be proving that 2 to the n plus 3 to the n is never a cube number, and I'm going to be using Fermat's last theorem to help me. Let's firstly deal with the case where n is 1. We just get 2 to the 1 plus 3 to the 1, which is 5, and that's definitely not a cube. Okay, what about if n is bigger than 2, or bigger than or equal to 2, sorry? Well, we're going to make use of the fact that 3 to the n is definitely going to be at least 3 squared, and, and in fact it's going to be a multiple of 3 squared. So if I look at this mod 9, so if I look at 2 to the n plus 3 to the n, that's just going to be the same as 2 to the n mod 9, because as I say, 3 to the n will be a multiple of 9. And we want this to be a cube number, so I'll call this x cubed, and I'm going to be showing that this gives us a contradiction. Okay, so you get x cubed is 2 to the n mod 9. But now what we're going to do is have a think about x cubed. x is a positive integer, so when I cube it, it can only be one of three values mod 9. That is 0, 1, or minus 1. So if you've not seen this result before, let me just show it here. x here is a positive integer, so therefore x has to be either a multiple of 3, uh, 1 more than a multiple of 3, or 2 more than a multiple of 3. So I'm going to write it as 3k plus r, where r is either 0, 1, or 2, which corresponds to its remainder. So if I look at x cubed, that's just going to be 3k plus r cubed. And now using the binomial theorem, this is just 27k cubed plus 27k squared r plus 9k r squared plus r cubed. And now looking at this mod 9, well, this is a multiple of 9, this is also a multiple of 9, this is a multiple of 9, this guy isn't, so this will just be r cubed. And if r is only 0, 1, or 2, this can either be 0, 1, so 0 cubed is 0, 1 cubed is 1, or 2 cubed, which is 8, but that's the same as minus 1. Cool, so any number, when you cube it, will either be 0, 1, or minus 1. So we get this here, so I can say that 2 to the n must therefore either be 0, 1, or minus 1, mod 9. Cool. Well, what are the powers of 2 mod 9? Well, if we look at 2 to the 1, that's just 2. 2 squared, that's 4. 2 cubed, that's 8, but that's the same as minus 1, mod 9. Then we get minus 2, minus 4, minus 8, which is the same as 1. And then you get 2, and then you get 4, and so on. This list just repeats itself again. You get 2, 4, minus 1, it's minus 2, minus 4, 1, and so on. This continues forever. And so if we want 2 to the n to be either 0, 1, or minus 1, well, looking at this list here, there's no chance it will be 0, but it could be 1 or minus 1, because those both occur in the list. Well, where do they occur? They occur at every third term. So every third term, we'll get minus 1, then 1, then minus 1, then 1, and so on. So if we want 2 to the n plus 3 to the n to be a cube number, we said that 2 to the n must be either 0, 1, or minus 1, mod 9. And the only possibilities are minus 1 and 1, and that only occurs every third position. So this tells us that n must be a multiple of 3. So I'll call it 3m for some number m. Can you see the issue with this? What's 2 to the n plus 3 to the n? Well, this is supposed to be x cubed. But 2 to the n plus 3 to the n, if n is 3m, I can write this as 2 to the 3m plus 3 to the 3m, which is supposed to be 2 to the m cubed plus 3 to the m cubed. But 2 to the n plus 3 to the n, this is always still x cubed. But hold on a minute, you've got a cube number plus another cube number equals another cube number. Uh-oh, this contradicts Fermat's last theorem. And so therefore, it's impossible to find uh, a positive integer n such that 2 to the n plus 3 to the n is a cube number. And that proves our claim. A really, really nice application of Fermat's last theorem to solving this not too difficult elementary number theory problem. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.